it happens every year. As soon as the school year starts, stores set out the fall decorations. Pumpkins and Halloween decor creep in by Labor Day. And well before Thanksgiving, Christmas lights and reindeer hit the shelves. And every single year, we, we all talk about our friends who just can't wait to put up their Christmas tree or, or, the, or decorate the inside or the outside of their houses. And sometimes we think that they are really impatient and they're really pushing the envelope. And sometimes we are those people. <laughs> this year, for the first time ever, Marcy, my wife, and I went outside on a warm, sunny afternoon, about 50 degrees, and set up our lighted Christmas trees and reindeer before Thanksgiving, just in time for the windstorms to knock them down several times. There is a running joke in our house that I don't drag those items out of the closet and decide it's time to put these things out in our yard until well after dark. And we go outside on the coldest, windiest night of the year, usually a day or two before Christmas. It's almost a requirement that we are not able to see well, to put the stakes in the ground, and that it be snowing or raining for maximum discomfort, and that we get so cold that we need to come inside and drink hot chocolate just to warm up <laughs> around midnight when we finally get in the house. Now, for those of us who wanted to get going early with our decorating, psychologists actually think that's an okay idea. They say it will make us happier. According to psychologist Deborah Sarani, decorating for Christmas can definitely lift our mood. It creates a neurological shift that can produce happiness. Perhaps it's because it takes us out of our normal routine and it signals our senses that something unusual is about to happen. Sarani states, Christmas decorating will spike dopamine, a feel-good hormone. Now, how in the world does that happen, you might wonder. She goes on to tell us that for starters, it's the bright lights and the colors. They increase our energy levels and boost happiness. And then there's the general ambiance created by the decorations. Who can resist smiling at the sight of a Christmas tree being lit for the very first time of the season? Then there's the nostalgia factor. For a lot of us, Christmas is a magical time. It's a time of innocence. It's a time of joy. If we had happy childhood memories of the holidays, then we are much more likely to want to recreate those feelings as early in the season as we can. If, however, holidays dredge up bad memories from childhood, then we might want to put off decorating until very late or skip decorating altogether. So this morning, I ask us a simple question. Why do we decorate our homes for Christmas? Why do we have Christmas trees and lights and all that stuff? Well, I did some research and I learned some things that I didn't know about Christmas decorations, and I want to share that information with you today. The tradition of Christmas trees traces back to the 16th century in Germany, where Christians decorated trees. Evergreen trees had long been a source of joy during the harsh winter months. They were fragrant, and because they retained their green color throughout all four seasons, everyone viewed them as a reminder of warmer months to come. From Germany, the practice of cutting down a tree and dragging it indoors traveled to England via Queen Charlotte, who was the wife of George III. And then, just like COVID, it spread from England to North America 
very quickly. When they first hauled the trees inside, they decorated them with candles because, of course, they didn't have electricity yet. So apparently they would call everyone into a room and light some candles and then set the candles up on the branches for just a few moments, giving everybody a few minutes to appreciate the sight, and then they would blow the candles out. They knew better than to burn their Christmas trees down. It wasn't until Thomas Edison came along in 1880 that we had the first ever electric Christmas lights. He decorated his Menlo Park laboratory with strings of electric incandescent bulbs to not only spread some Christmas cheer, but also to promote the use of electric lighting because people were skeptical at that time of electrical lighting. The first colored bulbs were used on a Christmas tree, again, by Edison and his friend Edward Johnson two years later in 1882. They used red, white, and blue bulbs on a large tree, and they invited hundreds of people to come and watch the lighting of the tree. Other outdoor holiday lighting goes back to the days of the Norsemen celebrating Yule which was a midwinter celebration culminating in the burning of a Yule log. It was believed that the Yule log summoned the sun's return while simultaneously driving out evil spirits. It has been argued that Christian traditions build on the idea of the Yule log by using light during the holidays to represent Jesus lighting up the darkness. In fact, the use of light as a reminder of Jesus is reinforced with this verse in the Gospel of John. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. Back in those early days, candles were used for both light and heat in the winter months, but also to welcome travelers in remote areas. We have continued to use electric and battery operated candles for Christmas, de Christmas decorations. There is nothing more welcoming than the sight of a candle in a window. Candles are used across many of the religious holidays of this season as a symbol of hope and a symbol of new beginnings. Poinsettias, mistletoe, and holly also have a rich tradition and are popular in our Christmas decor. Now, mistletoe was adopted by the Victorians as a way to steal a kiss during the holiday season. Mistletoe could be hung anywhere in the home and anyone who stood under it was allowed to be kissed. The catch was though, that there could only be one kiss per berry on, on the mistletoe plant and then the berry must be removed after each kiss. Obviously, once the berries were gone, no more kisses under that mistletoe. I'm not sure we are following that guideline these days or even using mistletoe in that way. Now, poinsettias are commonly enjoyed for their colorful hues as well as their incredibly long lifespans. The poinsettia first became associated with Christmas during the 16th century in Mexico, where incidentally they grow. According to a popular legend, a young girl named Pepita was upset because she had no gift for the baby Jesus. When she was told that Jesus would love any present that she had to offer, she gathered a bouquet of weeds outside near a path. And then she put those weeds near the baby Jesus in a nativity scene. 
According to the story, those weeds sprouted gorgeous red flowers, which we now know as red poinsettias. And they were quickly adopted by Franciscan friars in Mexico as a part of the holiday celebration. And then Joel Roberts Poinsett, the first ever U.S. ambassador to Mexico, brought those plants back to the United States in the early 1900s. Oops, in the early 1800s. It took nearly a hundred more years before displaying poinsettias became a tradition in our country. And finally, let's talk about the colors of the season. Why is there so much red and green? Is that because of Coca-Cola? <laughs> well, as it turns out, those two colors are steeped in a religious context. The color green is associated with the continuation of life throughout the winter, as well as the belief in the eternal life of Jesus. Meanwhile, red was traditionally used to symbolize the blood of Jesus. Today, the colors red and green are used in both non-religious and religious settings to celebrate the season. I have mentioned to you several times that the blend of the secular and the religious in this holiday of Christmas has always been fascinating to me. It seems that whatever we need, we can find in this holiday. If we are seeking Santa, <laughs> we will easily find him. He is around in abundance. If we are seeking hope, we can find it in a candlelight, in the star on top of the tree. Though Christmas has largely become a secular holiday today, many people seek a deeper reason for the season. It is, after all, the season in which we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Let's drink in the beauty of the decorations this season. Let's be reminded of God's presence with each beautiful light that we see. Let's allow the warmth and the generosity that we feel around us at this season help us to believe in and remember the goodness of other people. I would encourage each of us to seek clarity this season, to seek understanding, and to seek God. As we decorate our homes, let's ponder some of the meaning of our choices and some of the traditions that we have learned about today. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. As you know, Entry Point Faith relies on your financial contributions to keep everything going. If you would like to donate, please head on over to the website at entrypointchurch.org and you can click on the donate button. We meet every week at Connor Prairie in Fishers, Indiana at 10.30 a.m. Plan to arrive a little bit early so that you can become a part of the community.